Well, you know, <laughs> it's wonderful that how writers can dream up these things. But he forgets what the cameraman, how are you going to get the bird to fly in from the ocean? That's a problem. James Wong Hao, or at birth, Wong Tong Jim, was born in Gongsao, China on August 28, 1899. It wasn't long before he'd moved to the Mountain of Gold in Pascal, Washington with his father, where his father would become the first Chinese merchant in town. And through all of that, never getting to know his mom either. But that was just a start. Wong's life was nowhere near easy, as he had to battle many racial barriers in everyday life along with his film career. He was pranked and called racial slurs by his classmates, and these instances often ended up in fistfights for Wong to protect himself. He even took treats from his dad's shop to give to kids in hopes they'd be nicer to him. Even the staff were prejudiced against Wong. A teacher quit simply because she didn't want to teach a child of Chinese descent. Another even changed his name to the one we know today, James Wong Hao, to format his name for the English language. With all of this, it's inevitable that Wong just wanted to fit in. His father still wanted him to embrace his culture by wearing Chinese clothing with a long queue that fell down his back. Wong, already established and being interviewed, reflected on his early life by saying, quote, I wanted to get away from the Chinese thing. Other than my looks, I was purely American, end quote. And so, after his father's death, he fled Pasco looking for a better life, while escaping the bigoted community and his abusive stepmother in the process. There must have been many possibilities Wong had on his mind in what he could do away from Pasco. The two major ones we know, a pilot and a boxer. Unfortunately, a Chinese man couldn't become a pilot at this time in American history, but he was able to get by for a bit as a boxer, making his fight winnings a living wage until it couldn't suffice much longer, and his final job before entering film, a bellboy at the Beverly Hills Hotel. At the age of 17, he got into the film industry as a cleaner for the famous players Lasky Corporation, making some key connections along the way. Funny enough, someone he formerly boxed with told him to seek Alvin Wyckoff, a cinematographer for Cecil B. DeMille. He later assisted Alvin and taught himself the camera offset. In 1922, when he was ordered to take portraits of silent film star Mary Miles Minter, he found the formal beginning of his camera career, thus getting his start in the silent film scene. When Wong got his start in film, it didn't take long for him to climb the ranks. Like how he got his start in his film career, some of it was unintentional, but for the most part, he was a man of quick thinking and problem solving, while at the same time inventive, pioneering new camera techniques. This one piece of random creativity helped him get his jump start. Wong says, so The news got around that uh, Mary Miles Miller had imported herself uh, an oriental cameraman. He hides behind black velvet, <laughs> and he makes your eyes go dark. He shot a boxing scene on roller skates, used tin cans as a reflection to light a scene, shot scenes while being pushed in a wheelchair, and even weighed down birds to make them land where they were blocked. Reasonable creativity was the name of the game for Wong. He's best known for being the first to use the wide angle, or fisheye lens, in which he used to show off a Kafka-esque nightmare that sets and lighting alone could not achieve. He's the innovator on low-key lighting, earning him his low-key how nickname. Along with deep focus, ceiling sets, which he used to replicate shipboard claustrophobia, and was also one of the first ever to use a handheld camera. He specializes in many genres, arguably best known for noir and his dramatic black and white lighting and deep shadows. Aside from noir, he handles chemistry and exchanges well in the genre of romance. He's also shot military personnel of actors and extras totaling 1,250 people for the war genre on set, and he uses his wide-angle lens for new ways in the sci-fi genre. Howe's most famous works range from his decades in the industry. Starting off in the 1920s in the silent era, Herbert Brennan's Peter Pan and Laugh Clown Laugh. Outside of silent film, He's worked on many acclaimed classics, such as Fantasia from 1940, Seconds from 1966, Sweet Smell of Success from 1957, The Thin Man from 1934, HUD from 1963, 
which he also won an Academy Award for, and Yankee Doodle Dandy from 1942. All reasons why he was one of the best working and paid cameramen of all time. Throughout his career, he's received 10 Academy Award nominations and two wins, making himself the first Asian American to have an Academy Award. Rose Tattoo, James Wong Howe. I'm very grateful this evening. I want to thank my crew of the Hal Wallace and Paramount Pictures and the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Science to make this possible. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, the bullying didn't stop for Howe after he left school. In the early 30s, a predominantly white crew refused to take orders from him as an Asian man. Even his marriage in 1937 was not recognized until 20 years later for being interracial. During World War II, Howe wore a badge saying, I am Chinese, to not be confused with the Japanese, and he was prevented from being an American citizen until the Chinese Exclusion Act was repealed in 1943. His life and career was coming to a close. He never got to wind down, but for Howe, that wasn't a bad thing either. He spent nearly 60 years in the industry, shooting over 130 pictures in Hollywood and England, working until the age of 75, constantly advancing the medium in the process too. He was still getting great offers till then, notably Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather, but had to turn down due to his battle with illness. It was a year later, age 76, that Howe died. Today, we celebrate the triumphant life an Asian American had in the film industry, and we can hope for many more alike in the future. Thanks for watching.